Rev up your engines. Fonlu says, do I have to service a Corolla CVT? Dealer says it is lifetime fluid. Yeah, you got to change that fluid. Let me tell you something. Ask them what they mean by lifetime fluid. And they say, well, the fluid is good for the lifetime of the transmission. Then ask them, what's the warranty on the transmission? If they say it's like 100,000 miles or whatever, if it breaks after that, then you got to buy a new $5,000 transmission. So I personally would change it every 60,000 miles or so. Lifetime fluid is a bunch of malarkey. Nothing lasts forever. All fluids get dirty inside spinning gears and stuff they all wear out they all there's chains inside there the chain links wear out they get dirty then there's more friction all fluid gets dirty and needs to be changed eventually and they're just pulling the scam saying it's a lifetime fluid meaning the lifetime of the transmission and when it breaks out of warranty you got to pay for another one mr. live era says Scotty 1990 Honda Prelude for a fun car yay or nay I like the style. If you like it and you get fine when it's in really good shape, it can be a fun car, but I got a customer who bought that same car. He's had nothing but problems with it because it's so old, you're talking about almost a 30 year old car. And here's the thing about the Preludes that a lot of people don't understand. The Preludes are very similar to the Honda Accords, but a lot of their parts are completely different. For example, that the Prelude has a different compressor than the Honda Accord back in 1990. I could get a brand new Honda Accord compressor, but I could only get rebuilt ones for the Prelude, and I don't believe in rebuilt ones. So he kept buying rebuilt ones, I kept putting them on, they kept breaking. Oh, so you gotta think about that on a really old car like that. The parts can be super expensive. Then again, let's say you live up north, you don't care about air conditioning, they don't have to worry about that stuff. The rest of the vehicles are pretty solid. Mario 075 says, Scotty, I'm considering buying an 04 and 05 Subaru WRX. Is there anything to look at when inspecting the car? Now they can be fun cars, but it's a Subaru with a boxer engine. They are notorious for blowing head gaskets. You can watch my video, how to tell if your head gasket's blown on YouTube. You can buy the kit that I have at Amazon for like 35 bucks. So you can test head gaskets blowing. If it is, don't even think about buying it. Now, if it's a standard transmission, yes. Yeah, check to see if the clutch is slipping because they do wear out. But it's an automatic transmission. You really want to road test it well because that's the weakest thing. In Subarus, are their automatic transmissions. They have nothing but problems with them. They don't even make their own. They buy them from Nissan, Jadco. So it's not like they're even making their own transmission so you'd want to check that too. And Carlos says what's up Scotty this is the second time in one year I've had to replace the alternator my Acura MDX 2007 what underlying problem could be going on? Okay first of all always have the battery load tested too because battery and the alternator work together you got a weak battery you're going to keep buying alternators because it'll make them work too hard so I had that load tested too. Make sure you're buying from a quality store that says quality parts almost all remanufactured not new and a lot of guys just do a crap job remanufacturing. And the third thing is you want to have a pro like me, if you keep having it over and over again, you put another one at last, you check some kind of minor electrical shorts. Because if you got bad wiring, bad wiring, loose connectors, that builds up heat. Then the alternator has to put out more power, it strains and it can burn out faster. Those are the three main things that'll make an alternator go out bad. One broadcast, I'm thinking about getting a truck. Should I get a 99 Chevy Silverado or a 7.3 power stroke? First, you got to decide what do you want. You want to have a diesel engine if you're towing large distances, if you're towing heavy weights. Gasoline engines aren't made for towing and hauling. Diesels are. I'd get the Ford products anyways because they're better made. But if you go back in 1999, the Silverado V8 gas engines were decent pickup trucks. If you wanted a gasoline pickup truck, yeah, maybe go ahead and get one of those. But if you really want to haul a lot of stuff, get the power stroke. Diesel engines are the way to go. If you're really going to tow stuff around. Brent says, Scotty got a 2013 Toyota Corolla. 95,000 miles. And the clutch pedal sometimes squeak when I press it. And I replaced the slave cylinder, but it doesn't seem to fix it. What could it be? Okay, well, talking about squeaking inside the car. The slave cylinder's on the transmission. Could be your clutch master cylinder squeaking. But more often, if it's coming on the inside. Clutch pedal, and it's got a spring built in it. And they're cheap bushings that are in those things. A lot of times they just wear, and then they squeak. Especially when the rubber gets worn, and then the metal hits metal. Some really good spray lithium. Lithium is really good for spraying bare metal. Spray the spring and all the bushings there and then see what happens. If it goes away and you got to spray it four or five times a year, big deal. A can of spray costs like seven bucks and it's really good for spraying any kind of bare metal. Lithium. That's what the lithium lube is really good for. So if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, remember to ring that bell.